All right. So the whole idea behind this presentation is to talk about why the Ruby programming language is special. A lot of the introductory talks that uh, we typically do uh, don't really spend much time talking about what makes a language interesting. They simply focus on things like the uh, you know, how to do for loops or how variables work and all that. And so the idea of this talk is to show you what, you know, why I like Ruby and what kinds of things we can do with the Ruby programming language. So the kinds of things that make Ruby special are things like its expressiveness. Um, instead of doing iteration, we can handle things like, say, um, our, our, since everything is an object, we have methods like times on our integers. And so we can do things like five times do and do our iteration this way. So if we have an, a collection of things, it's very easy for us to do iteration. It makes for expressive code. And this is very useful when dealing with larger code bases because we tend to, as programmers, we tend to read, uh, read our code much more than we write our code. We're almost always debugging something or reading back through lines and lines of code. So expressiveness in a language is a very, very nice thing. One of the other things that's, that's special about Ruby is its, its dynamic nature. And we can use patterns like this. We can use these, these iterations uh, to walk over a collection of things and use methods in Ruby to define methods. And this, this particular pattern actually generates getter and setter methods for first name, last name, and gender. And so if we had to come along and add uh, a middle name to this, we could just add the middle name to our array, and then it would generate the next couple of methods for us. We can use that facility to basically write code that writes code. It's also a flexible language. Um, languages like functional programming have this concept of being able to uh, do things like uh, you know, redu reduction and things like that. And so we can create our we can create methods that uh, just take a series of arguments, take a series of arguments, and and uh, do complex work on them. This is a very simple example of you know of doing something like an addition or we just take an indeterminate number of entries in an array and add them together. Well, we can use Ruby to create our own languages on top of the Ruby language. We can make our own domain-specific languages with Ruby because of its flexibility. It's also an extendable language. This is an example of some code from a simple Ruby on Rails application that, that looks up uh, entries in a database by a keyword search. Just a simple looks up like addresses or looks up product names by a keyword. And it's a simple like uh, like clause of what it actually compiles down to. But we can generate this in what we call a module. And then we can share this across multiple entries or multiple models in our in our system so that we're not repeating the same search and we're not having to worry about the problems and perils of multiple inheritance. Instead, we can add these behaviors and share them across our classes. The other thing that's special about Ruby is that it's very dangerous. In this example here, I'm actually taking one of the core classes, the string class of the Ruby programming language, and I'm opening it up and I'm replacing a method in there called nil that we use to check to see if the string has content in it, and I'm replacing it with just an I'm replacing it with it should return true if it's an empty string. Nothing in the Ruby programming language prevents me from doing this. Nothing prevents me from opening up existing classes and redefining their definitions or redefining what they do. Um, it's, but the power that this gives us uh, is the, the, the ability to fix bugs when they occur. If, if we're working with a library that is not performing the way we'd like it to, we're free to just open it up and fix it ourselves rather than waiting on someone else to provide a patch for us in, in the interim. Um, it's also important to understand that things like this are the best way to cause you and your team to shoot each other in the face. It's very difficult to track these kinds of things down. And so with the great power that you get from being able to do this, you also create a, can create a lot of problems for yourself. But it's important to point out that this is one of the things that makes Ruby very special. It doesn't prevent you from doing these types of things. It gives you that flexibility. So our roadmap for today is to talk about you know, how we can put all of these things together to write code that we can modularize and extend. We'll start off by talking about how we require files and how requiring files in Ruby is just sometimes a lot more than just adding additional libraries into a namespace. And we'll talk about how testing is built in. We'll talk about how Ruby makes a distinction between classes and instances. We'll discuss message passing. We'll talk about blocks and lambdas. 
We'll discuss monkey patching very briefly, and we'll talk about modules and how to put these things together. There'll be a small code demo at the end of the presentation as well. And of course, I'm always encouraging you to ask questions along as we go, and uh, our moderator will make sure that uh, we get enough time to get those questions answered. Let's start with require. Require is one of those building blocks that we use in the Ruby programming language. It's sort of like an, an import or include in other languages. Um, but what we really want to be able to do with it is, is to have this uh, more functionality in our code. So out of the box, Ruby's date class uh, doesn't have a method on it called today. Well, if we try to call it, it, it will give us this thing called an undefined no method error. It's, a, it's somewhat of an exception. And we'll get this undefined method today for the date class. But if we require the date library, the full date library, then we can call the today method on date. And what's actually happening behind the scenes is that the, the date library that we're requiring in is actually making modifications to the underlying date class. And it's adding additional methods and behaviors to that class. So once that's loaded, I can, I can now call this today method and I can get today's date as a string very easily. This is basically how in Ruby we build code. We build code that uh, that builds on other functions. So I can include a single file that can completely change everything else about my program. Of course, with things like monkey patching, where we can end up overriding our own classes and our ability to pull other files in that completely change core classes we have to be concerned about how we test our code so that we make sure we don't break things. And Ruby has testing built into the core language. To make a simple, simple unit test in Ruby, all I have to do is require a library called test unit and then create a, create a class that inherits from test unit test case. In this particular example, I'm going to test out to see if someone can drive, someone's old enough to drive in, in, in our state. Wisconsin here. Uh, you have to be 16 in order to drive a car. So uh, we're going to just do a little simple test that says a person under 16 can't drive. We'll create an instance of a person class in there. We'll set the age to 15 and then we'll use the assert keyword of the testing framework and see and we'll assert that can drive returns false. We'll just use the not can not p dot can drive. And this simple test will be enough to help us guide our development. We don't have to do any additional setup than this. This is all we need to do in Ruby to do our testing. There are other libraries we could use, but at the core of the language is this very simple testing framework that we can use that works very much like other testing frameworks in other languages with assertions and, and things of that nature. And the pattern that we typically follow when we're doing this kind of development in Ruby is to just create this test, the test a single thing, make the test prove that the test fails, and we'll see that when we run the test, we get an uninitialized constant person, since we don't have a person class. So then we go back, we create our person class, create our attribute accessor for our age, and see if they can drive or not, and do the, do the actual logical expression. And when we run our test again, the test passes. Having the testing so core and integral to the language gives us a little bit more freedom and a little bit more comfort to tackle some of the more advanced and dangerous features of the language. When we talk about things in Ruby, we talk about classes and objects, and in the classical sense, we, we, we kind of train that a class as sort of a blueprint for an object. But in Ruby, everything is an object. Nil is an object, true is an object, false is an object, and classes are objects. A Ruby class is actually an object of the type of class. So you have an object being an instance of a class, which means that classes can have methods just like objects can have methods. These are often used as static methods. We tend to call them class methods in Ruby. And so we end up with things like instance methods and class methods. On the left side of the screen, you see we have a person class and we have a sleep method in there. And this is an instance method. In order for us to call the sleep method, I need to go and create a new instance of a person class. So I have p equals person.new and I can call the sleep method on 